Softball achieves numerous accolades. And lacrosse stays hot with a three-game winning streak. All this and more on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome into the Penguin Rundown. Kyle Wills here alongside John Ostopowitz. John, an exciting week for Penguin Athletics. Uh, a member of the YSU softball team broke the all-time hits record, and the softball or the baseball team got their first win at home and their first series win of the season at Eastwood Field. Yeah, and it has been a, such a fantastic weekend here, especially with track and field today. Ty Hunt was just named Nike Horizon League Track and Field Player of the Week, so that is such a great accolade. And track and field just continues to be dominant. You know, last week Zach Gem just broke his record, and this week another record was broken on the women's side, so it just continues to be fantastic. And as far as the tennis teams, the women's tennis team is undefeated in Horizon League so far this season, and the men's team has their share of the conference title for the first time since 1980, so that's a pretty uh, cool fact to be able to share this past week. But like I said earlier, the softball team, uh, remember the softball team broke the all-time hits record this past weekend, so that's where I will get you started. The softball team had a busy week since the last rundown, playing five games in a span of four days. Last Wednesday, in a doubleheader against St. Bonaventure, the Penguins would sweep the Bonnies. Game one was an extra inning thriller as it took YSU nine innings to earn the win. Senior, pitch, senior pitcher Ellie Buffenbarger pitched all nine innings in the contest while picking up 10 strikeouts in the game. The extra inning stalemate was broken up by sophomore Haley Niedercore, who had an RBI single on top of the ninth. In the nightcap, YSU's pitching would be the key to the victory as sophomore Sophie Howell picked up her first career shutout, allowing only two hits while striking out six. This YSU win would also make it number 600 for the career of head coach Brian Campbell. After an off day on Thursday, YSU would start a three-game series at home, starting on Friday with a doubleheader against the NKU Norse. The first game of the series would be a slow one for the YSU offense as the Penguins could only push across one run and struck out nine times in the contest. Buffenbarger was slated with the loss after allowing all five of NKU's runs. However, congratulations are in order to senior outfielder Yasmin Romero as her lone hit in the bottom of the fifth inning set the program record for most hits with 234. Here's what, here's what Romero had to say about her wrecking breaking performance. I've been thinking about that for a while. I've been eyeing it for a while and it wouldn't have happened without my team behind me. So it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, the day my freshman year season ended, I've been calculating every single year what it, how many hits per year I would need to, to break it. So. The fact that it's today is just like not even real. The nightcap of Friday's doubleheader would be in YSU's fortune this time as the Penguins picked up the win with a final score of 2-1. to one. The game was scoreless until the fifth inning where two Penguins would cross home plate. Freshman Bree Kohler scored on a Norse fielding error, then Romero had an RBI single to provide an insurance run. Sophomore Sophie Howell earned her second win of the week in a complete game where she allowed only one run and struck out six. Here's what Hal had to say about her recent performances on the mound. I think that I've like calmed down my nerves a lot more. I've really like settled in. Now I'm like used to being on the team. You know, last year I was just a relief pitcher. So I got innings, but it wasn't the same as actually going out starting games. So I think now that my nerves are settled, I'm a lot better. Saturday afternoon was the rubber game of this Horizon League matchup with the NKU Norse taking the series win with a final score of four to one. The Norse got the scoring done early, putting up three runs in the top of the first, then scored another run in the top of the third inning. The only YSU run would come from junior Megan Turner, who had a solo home run, which would be her sixth of the season. It also leads to the team. The softball team stayed in the Horizon League play as yesterday they had a doubleheader against the Cleveland State Vikings. For results of the game, you can check out YSUsports.com. And this weekend, the Penguins will close the home season with a three-game series against the Green Bay Phoenix. The women's lacrosse team had a successful Easter weekend as they picked up two wins on the Michigan road trip and now ride a three-game winning streak. The Penguins battled against the Detroit Mercy Titans in a game that went into overtime, where YSU ultimately came out on top with an overall score of 10-9. The game started out slow for the Penguins offense as they fell behind 7-3 at halftime, but the third quarter was where the game would turn around as YSU scored five unanswered goals to take the lead. Graduate student Ali Corinne led 
the offense that quarter, scoring a hat trick. The Penguins would hold on to the lead in the fourth quarter, but less than 90 seconds remaining, the Titans would score a goal that would send the game into overtime. Freshman Natalie Calandra Ryan would answer the call as she scored the tie-breaking goal that secured a win for YSU, and also a spot in the 2022 mid American Conference Tournament. On Monday, Youngstown State faced off against Central Michigan despite the Penguins playing in cold weather. The sticks were hot as the Penguins would come out with a close win over the Chippewas, a final score of 11 to 10. Corinne took the lead once again as she scored a total of five goals on nine shots. Kalandra Ryan reached a big milestone in the contest as she scored her 50th goal of the season. Graduate student Savannah Clark made 10 saves for the Gwens on 20 shots on goal. The Chippewas made a strong push towards the end of the fourth quarter, but YSU's solid defense held Central Michigan down. The lacrosse team will play their last home game of the season this Saturday when they host a matchup against Kent State at 1 p.m. at Farmers National Bank Field. Now as for the baseball team, they won their second Horizon League series of the year, taking down the Milwaukee Panthers at home. On Thursday night, the Penguins got a tremendous pitching performance from senior Chad Coles as he went a career-high seven innings, allowing just five hits and two runs, grabbing his second win of the season. The Penguins and Panthers were tied up after two in the seventh inning, while junior Braden O'Shaughnessy blasted a two-run home run to take a 4-2 lead in the seventh. YSU closer junior Nate Ball hung on to the lead and recorded his seventh save of the season. On Friday afternoon, it was a slugfest at Eastwood Field with both teams combining for 30 runs. The Penguins had a five-run lead after four innings, but Milwaukee responded with a six spot in the fifth inning with two Panthers hitting a home run. MKE led 10-6 in the seventh, but YSU put up five runs in the inning, ignited by a Braden O'Shaughnessy two-run home run. Once again, the Penguins couldn't hold on to the lead with MKE scoring seven runs in the last two innings, winning the ball game 17 to 13. Wiseu had a season high 20 hits in the loss, ignited by a career high performance by senior third baseman, uh, Steven Desanio, as he went a perfect six for six at the plate. He was one hit away from a single game program record on Friday. Here's what Desanio had to say about his approach in game two. I know I had six hits yesterday. And to be honest with you, I had no idea I was going for a school record. I think just taking every at bat for what it is, not, not getting in your head about, oh, I got a hit and I got to keep doing it. It doesn't matter. Um, so just staying clear minded and just, just having a same approach every at bat and putting the ball in play. On Saturday, Wiseu got another stellar pitching performance in the rubber match. Junior Matt Broski threw seven innings, giving up just two earned runs and striking out four Panthers. Offensively, Wiseu stayed hot at the plate scoring 15 runs on 10 hits, with four guys having multi-hit games. Desanio started right off where he left off on Friday, recording three hits and two RBIs. YSU scored in five different innings to take the weekend series, winning game three, 15 to four. The crew was able to catch up with head coach Dan Bernalini on the weekend series. You know, he, he didn't, didn't see a whole lot of results early in the season. He was pitching great and wasn't getting a lot of credit for it. Um, today, I thought he, he was able to pitch around some big um, some big situations. We turned a key double play, kind of got us out of an inning, and then he settled down all the way through. So um, he does a great job for us. It's good to have him on Sundays because you get that opportunity to win on Sunday. The team had a busy weekend ahead, taking on Oakland at home in a doubleheader on Friday before traveling to Milwaukee to take on the Panthers in a doubleheader on Sunday. Check out YSUSports.com for live stats. For more on the baseball team, Richie Giuliano sat down with the O'Shaughnessy brothers to catch up on the team season. Thanks, Kyle. Well, welcome into the roundtable, and we are pleased to be joined today by two members of the Youngstown State baseball team, two brothers on the squad, Pat O'Shaughnessy and Braden O'Shaughnessy. Guys, thanks for coming out today. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. All right, we got to address the elephant in the room, two brothers playing Division One baseball. You know, what has this experience been like so far? Pat, you can start uh, us off. It's been awesome. I mean, it's, it's like we're in the backyard again, just... I mean, the whole life, whether it be us playing, like I said, in the backyard, Little League, high school, all the way up. So it was kind of cool, and it's been awesome to kind of just continue it all the way through and just keep being together. So I can't beat it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I remember we were at Seam Park when he was going his last game before college. He was going to college, and uh, it was like the last time we were ever going to play with each other again, and mm -hmm. then we got to reunite here in college again. And 
starting to play together. It's pretty cool. Now, you guys have had a great season so far, both of you. You finally return home to Eastwood Field. 28 games on the road to start the season. I mean, our first home stand against Northern Kentucky and then Milwaukee. What's it been like playing at home so far? Oh, it's been awesome. It's nice to not only wake wake up in your own bed, but also be able to drive back to like either your apartment or house. It's uh, You wouldn't think that it would uh, take that big of a toll on you. You know, you could stay in a hotel. You get there a few days before or so, but... It definitely does, and it's been awesome to not only play for the home crowd, but also to play it back again at Eastwood, so mm -hmm. it's been awesome. Yeah, like you said, I mean, traveling's cool when you first look at the schedule and see how you get to go all these different states and stuff, and then once you start doing it and you're in a hotel every weekend for most of the week, you're flying, you're traveling mm -hmm. early in the morning, it takes a toll on you, and especially 28 games is a long time, so once we got back home, I think we're starting to hit our stride right now, and it's nice being home back in your own bed, like he said, yeah. and back in front of the home crowd. Now, both of you guys have had a great month of April so far, uh, especially this past weekend against Milwaukee in the series victory pad. Two games with four RBIs apiece. You're really clutch uh, with runners on base. You have been transitioned from the cleanup hitter and the five hitter now to the leadoff spot. What's that kind of been like for you? I mean, it's the first time <laughs> in your career as a leadoff hitter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been awesome. It's been a, kind of a cool experience, you know, because I've always been, like you said, the four or five and kind of switching my role. I've been on base, you know, crazy amount of times being walked and everything so it's been it's been a great experience it's been fun to me you kind of get in the dugout you go right to bat I don't have to worry about all the uh, shenanigans in between so it's definitely uh, takes a little getting used to but I mean it's been awesome I love yeah. it and brain for you three home runs this past week one against Niagara in the midweek and then two against Milwaukee usually your brother's the guy that brings the power uh, to the lineup but you've had a lot of home runs this season so far as well so what's kind of been the key to success for you in adding that power to the bat uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, got it from him basically, I'll put it that way, but just a lot of hard work and stuff, being in the cages a lot, I mean, it's been a slow start for the offense really, and then for us to be able to pick it up this weekend at Milwaukee, I think it was a huge series for us both bottom teams in the league. We need to get some wins going, and I think it was huge for us. Yeah, now this week is huge for you guys as well. Oakland, a team you have a chance to win the overall season series and get some revenge after dropping two out of the three at third place. Uh, so how big is this weekend for you guys, knowing that you could climb right back into the top three in the standings in the Horizon League? Oh, I know. It's awesome. I'm excited to kind of know where we're at and kind of be hitting the, the secondary where we're playing the teams the second time while I feel like he said we're kind of hitting our stride, starting to get the bats going, pitching going, and I think it should be a fun weekend, I do. Yeah, I think it's the biggest weekend we've had yet. Mm -hmm. and we keep saying like these three, th last three weekends are the, were the big series, but I think this weekend's really the one that we have to get after and take some wins. I mean, Oakland's a huge revenge series. They took two from us a couple weeks ago, and they had no business doing that. So I think it's going to be a huge series Friday and then go take yeah. a couple more from Milwaukee this weekend. Now, keys to success for both of you guys personally. You talked about the team goals. What are some things you guys want to work on to be able to guide your team to a Horizon League championship this year? Uh, I think it really comes down to which we've done a great job, especially recently. I think with us struggling, the biggest thing that our team's done and that I think we need to continue doing is that, like, just everyone's putting in the hard work. Everyone gets there early, whether it be practice or game days. Uh, everyone does whatever they need to do to get better, whether, whether it be talking to players, coaches, whatever they need to do, just finding out whether, what their role is and what needs to be done in order for them to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you still have to put in the work. It's going to be all year like that. but basically comes down to who makes more plays and I think we're starting to make more plays we're starting to hit with runners in scoring position and it's going to come down to who makes more plays in the end. Guys we appreciate you guys coming on today good luck Thanks this for weekend. You, for appreciate it. you can watch these boys on Friday they're at home against Oakland and a doubleheader. Pad and Braden O'Shaughnessy joining us here on the round table and we're going to send it back to our host and Kyle and John. Thanks guys. This past weekend, the men's tennis team remained unbeaten in Horizon League play at the YSU Indoor Tennis Center with a 5-2 victory over IUPUI on April 15th. The Penguins came out strong in doubles, winning at number one and number two, as freshman Harry Falzas and junior Lorentu Monachescu earned his first win for the Gwens at 6-1 at number two. Junior Will Everett and freshman Nathan Favier clinched the point with a 6-2 win. The Penguins had a 5-4 advantage at number 3 in singles as well. Then on April 16th, the men's tennis team clinched a share of its first ever Horizon League regular season title with a 6-1 win over UIC on Saturday. Youngstown State picked up a singles point with wins at number one and number two. At number one, Falzas and Monachescu went to work as they earned a 6-2 win to clinch the victory for YSU. 
Everett and Favier followed suit as they won at number two, six to two. Here are some of Favier's comments on the win against UIC. We struggled the first time we played them um, at Chicago. So we knew it was going to be tough. Um, we played good in doubles. We lost the doubles point at Chicago. So winning the doubles point today was, uh, had a good impact for us. And we used the momentum then to roll for singles and pick up five singles wins. The men's tennis team improves to 12-8 and overall and is unbeaten in Horizon League play at 7-0. They are also currently on a seven-game winning streak heading into their final regular season match at Cleveland State this Saturday. The women's tennis team is also finishing out their season strong as they defeated UIC and Milwaukee at the YSU Indoor Tennis Center. On Friday against UIC, the Penguins won in a commanding 5-2 final score to keep them undefeated in the Horizon League. Senior Cecilia Rosas and freshman Julia Marco claimed victory to earn the doubles, the doubles match point for YSU. While in singles competition, Rosas, Marco, freshman Lily Minich, and sophomore Maria Oliveira defeated the Flames in, to claim four points in the win. The team carried their winning momentum into Saturday against Milwaukee, defeating the Panthers in a dominant 6-1 win. Youngstown State put up a great performance in doubles competition as the duos of Rosas and Marco and Olivero and freshman Elisa Rigazio both notched wins in their matches to claim the doubles point. In singles matches, five Penguins defeated their opposing Panthers, including Rosas, Marco, Rigazio, Minich, and Olivera. A member of the Rundown crew caught up with Elisa Rigazio on the team's five-game winning streak in the Horizon League. I feel like uh, we won everything for now, and I hope we will win our last match next weekend, which can lead us to like uh, the tournament. And we just have like, if we win, like the confidence get better and bigger. So yeah, I think we are really good right now. Following their weekend, the women's tennis team remains undefeated in the Horizon League at 5-0 and are 11-8 overall. Fortunately, the Penguins will have home court advantage as they play their final regular season match this Saturday against Cleveland State at the YSU Indoor Tennis Center. The track and field team traveled to Lewisburg, Pennsylvania this past week for the two-day Bison Outdoor Classic hosted by Bucknell. On the final day, a new school record was etched by senior Nicole Squatrito, who highlighted the YSU track and field programs at Christie Mathewson Memorial Stadium. Squatrito finished with a time of 2 minutes and 12.18 seconds, a new YSU record in the women's 800-meter run, the seventh fastest mark of the event. Squatrito's time topped her previous program record mark in the event that was set during the 2018 season. In the main 800 meter event, four Penguins clock personal best efforts led by freshman Evan Alton, senior Michael Largus, and sophomores Jack Wilcoxon and Riley Jackson. Freshman Luke LeBoucher made the podium in the 10 meter hurdles for the third fastest mark of the event, while junior Aaron Bogard finished third best at the meet in the three at 3.8. 85 meter vault. Junior Dominic Perry posted the best penguin finish in the men's shot put, tossing a personal best 17.77 mark for a third place finish. While in the women's event, freshman Molly Radcliffe finished seventh with a 13.86 throw. Junior Olivia Jones acted as the best penguins finisher in the women's javelin throw, tossing a 40.14 meter mark on her third attempt of the event for the ninth best throw of the day. Lastly, earning a top 10 finish in the men's hammer throw, senior Zach Gem recorded a 55.27 personal best sling, and following right behind, junior Zach Gray finished 10th with a personal best 54.19 mark. The Penguins will continue their busy April schedule and will split squads to complete at the Ohio State's Jesse Owens Classic and Oregon's Oregon Relays this weekend. The women's golf team hosted the YSU Spring Invitational at the Youngstown Country Club over the weekend. The Invitational resulted in a seven-stroke win for the Penguins as junior Danae Rogola tied for a first-place finish for the second time this season with a single-round score of 78. Five other Penguins finished in the top 10 with scores ranging from 78 to 81. Those that finished in the top 10 were senior Puthita Conrudi, junior Christina Lewis, freshman Lizzie Sauer, 
senior Victoria Grant, and junior Allie St. Clair. The final score of the day for Youngstown State was 317, Cleveland State University 324, and Niagara University 344. This win for the Penguins will hopefully carry momentum into the next event, which is the Horizon League Championships that will start this Sunday at Mission Inn Resort in Howie in the Hills, Florida. Good luck to the entire team this upcoming weekend. The men's golf team had a busy day this past Monday as they completed in the right Wright State Invitational. The team finished with a three-way tie for fourth place in the tournament. Even in defeat, some of the golfers showed really strong performances. One of those standouts came from, the, from senior Kevin Scher, who finished with a tie for fifth place with a two-round score of 146. This score would mark his fifth top 10 finish of the season so far. In the first round, Scher had 12 pars and two birdies. Scher made a par or better on 11 of 13 holes. Another strong performance came courtesy of fellow senior Ken Keller, who shot a two-round score of 149 and finished in a tie for 13th place. In round one, Keller made 10 pars and four birdies. He made a par or better on 11 of 12 holes. With this performance, Keller got his sixth top, top 15 finish of the season. Up next, the men's golf team will look to head to Mission Inns Resort's El Campeon course in Florida to compete in the Horizon League Championships, set to take place April 24th through the 26th. Now let's send it over to Caleb Ellison for your Penguin Player of the Week. Thank you very much. This week's Penguin Play of the Week is going to come from senior outfielder Yasmin Romero of the softball team who made history against the NKU Norse. Anthony Romo oh. has the call. Hit back up the middle for a base hit and there it is. Yasmin Romero, the new all-time hits queen here at Youngstown State. This line drive single against the Norse in the fifth inning last week was Yasmin Romero's 234th career base hit with the Youngstown State Penguins, setting the all-time hits record for the softball program, and she now sits at 235 to extend the record. Congratulations to Yasmin on her historic career, and good luck on the rest of your season. Kyle and John, back to you guys. Thanks, Caleb. That'll wrap it up for us at the Penguin Rundown. Make sure to check us out on social media at Penguin Rundown 1 on Instagram and Twitter. And make sure to check out YSU.com for news, stats, highlights, and more. I'm Kyle Wills. And I'm John Ostopowitz. And we'll see you next time, Penguin Nation.